I am Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And with no stranger to the channel, we have Frank Troost. And I have to set this car up a little bit. When I asked Frank, Frank, in your collection, how many of these do you see? His answer was zero. Frank, tell him what we brought today. This is a 1961 Chrysler New Yorker convertible. Now, why? I mean, this was top of the line car. So if it's top of the line car, and I know they're only, let's say, under 600 built, you would think that they would have kept them, but what happened? Well, I don't think these uh, uh, full-size cars of this era were ever really uh, uh, big collector items. Uh, so um, they, they would rust away and deteriorate. I mean, cars of this period, when they had 60,000 miles, they pretty much needed to a fair amount of work. Uh, you got to 100,000 miles if it was still running. Uh, they uh, uh, the, then the the body would have been pretty well rusted out, and the engine needing a uh, overhaul. And so, uh, the, the very few survivors actually they used a lot of these big cars back in the 70s uh, for demolition derby races, <laughs> especially the Chrysler cars. They were the uh, I want to show them choice. the demolition derby car, and this car. Go ahead, keep, keep sharing. Well, with me, actually, the, the, the real car of choice for the demolition derby races uh, back in the uh, late 60s and 70s were Imperials. And that's my favorite collector car, Imperials. And, uh, and we featured yours. You're what, 61, right? Yes, and I, and I have a 60, and so, which is basically the same chassis and my car. My car story with so, Lou, Imperial 1960, Imperial 61. But this, especially in the sun, come on with me, Frank. Eventually, they outlawed Imperials, uh, hearses, and ambulances from the demolition derby races. So, but by that time, there weren't any left. The great Virgil Exner design. Yes, this is kind of his swan song. Uh, 61 for Chrysler, like the, the last year of the fence. In 62, they were gone. And as we show you some trunk and treats on this one, notice that gold scripting behind the chrome. The same thing with the wheels here. Even the songbirds sing when they see this one. You have the air venting coming right at you. Let's take a look at the front of this one. So the, the 61 uh, Chrysler's uh, and, uh, had the, uh, they, they changed the, the headlights, uh, the uh, 60's they were horizontal, 61 they went on that 45 degree angle. Frank, this is one of the easy cars that I don't have to ask you why'd you pick this car. This one, well, it just screams cool. Wow. Now, we just got the new top on it, so we probably are not pulling it down today, so I'm just giving some people some knowledge of that. But this car, well... Well, the, the car would have come with a vinyl top originally, and when I bought it, it had a vinyl uh, top that was rather ill-fitting. It, it really didn't measure up to the, to the restoration that the car had had. Um, I, I much prefer the uh, cloth tops. I think they're richer looking. Um, when you put the vinyl tops down too, if they're down for a period of time, you get creases in them and that are about impossible to get out. So I have uh, uh, been, I usually like to keep everything 100% stock, but I just feel the, the uh, cloth tops uh, are, are more practical and have a nicer look. And this, so this turns out, some people might think this is a rear taillight, but as you can see, it's clear. So this is the surprising rear light when you turn that on. Frank, and you were sharing that uh, this is the tail light. Yeah, the, the tail light was low. The, the year before, the car was very similar style. They changed the grill and the headlights a little in front, and then they uh, they changed these uh, uh, these uh, uh, bezels on the back and uh, put the uh, reverse light up high and then the tail light down low. So they switched them. And we'll show you the back of this. And we're going to give you some trunk and treats. And in our trunk and treats, we have our 61 Chrysler brochure. So I thought this would be a treat to look at this one. Here's 
featuring the new port. It's a little windy, so I'm going to hold this down. Notice we have our power antenna. I like how they boxed in the spring. You can see that there. The new port. The new port. The Windsor. The lower line, if you will. And then what we have here, the New Yorker, where they show the peacock. And then where we're at today, the New Yorker convertible. You can read some of the, whether you're a sports jacket or a dinner jacket, you'll feel at home in one of these two New Yorkers. Goes over the accessories. Try to go slow enough so you can flight swept deck lid, extra large rear window, sure grip differential, the Golden Lion engine. As you can see, quite the trunk and even the trunk bezel. And we're back. Frank, let's take a look at the interior, shall we? Okay. This, uh, I, I could give you a little background on Please. the car, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Uh, this car was in the junkyard for five or six years at least. Um, if I would have seen it in the junkyard, I absolutely would have taken a pass. It was all rusted out. Uh, the the uh, the front floor uh, said case on it. So which, it had a sheet metal piece. It had a sheet metal piece from a case tractor. Wow. <laughs> and that was on the floor. Wow. So it was uh, friends of mine, uh, Paul and Milt, they had located this car and they seemed to take a joy out of locating these derelict uh, old Chrysler cars and they uh, got a parts car and they restored it uh, from that. So wow, the original amazing. one had no power windows, it had no power seat, uh, it had no air conditioning, and so they took all that out of their parts car. and uh, To put this together to, to, like this. That, That's correct. So a huge undertaking. If, uh, if, if I would have guessed to, to do that, I, I would think it cost $140,000 minimum. Um, now the issue I, I have usually when I buy cars from them, they're beautifully restored, uh, but they're never really sorted out because they don't really drive them. So I think Lou, you were saying you saw this first about six years ago, and it was just uh, Friday. I got the last thing working. Did you? What, the what, the, what air, the air conditioner. The air conditioner. Yeah, every, so all the components were there, and it was all nicely painted and so on, but uh, uh, it wasn't working. It's the air mechanic tells me uh, is working. I, on, on all my cars, I, I have a mechanic that comes to my garage uh, every Friday, works about five hours. I leave him a list of things that need to be fixed. There is always a list for him, and there's about nothing that he's not able to uh, uh, figure out and repair. That's a great resource to have. Well, if, if I didn't have him, I, I couldn't have the, uh, the 11 or 12 cars that, that I have. I mean, I'd be running something constantly somewhere getting it fixed. Another lion. I think that's one of the uh, most unique and interesting uh, dashboards I ever put in the car. Uh, you see, it, it's uh, at night it glows. What do they call it? The pod or the uh, astropod or something? You know, uh, I think it was Astrodome, like the Astrodome. I think they had that that name first. But uh, very, very interesting, especially at night when it's uh, when it's lit up. Here's the lights when you're in it, and there's that pod we were talking about at night. How cool is that glow? Yeah, only one of the needles are working. They're that, glowing. That's pretty cool. 
I, I have one in, in my building as a wall ornament. Uh, other people put signs in their garages. I, I like to put dashboards, especially dashboards like this. So the, the uh, interesting thing in the turn signals of these uh, these cars, they uh, you'll notice there's no turn signal stock. Yeah. And uh, so they had a switch up here. Uh, and uh, there's a switch here to control the turn signal, and then there's a switch inside the steering wheel. Normally, if you buy one of these, one of the two doesn't work. Uh, but these, these are, are both functioning. The turn signals work okay. The, uh, when they were restoring the car, they had the steering wheel recast. All these old plastic steering wheels are going to be uh, yellowed and cracked if they're the original wheels. This interior is just, just amazing. I mean, it's just... One of the things that surprised me, by the time they got to 61, uh, Chrysler was kind of going cheap on their uh, New Yorker interiors. The, the vinyl weave that they have in the seats of this car are the same as their entry-level car. Uh, entry-level convertible in this car would have been like $800 more. Wow. And, uh, yeah, a little different seat pattern, but the same. Material. I know we're not going to open it. We've got the venting here and the day-night mirror. Yeah, that's, the, the vents are. Where, how do you open that? Cars. Is this is this this is this What's the top that? open? Uh, the top is. Uh, or is it right pull? over here? Okay. Here. Yep. Top left. Got it. And mirror control. Very cool. So let's let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Okay. Now it's usually the hunt for the release. Okay. There we go. So it was here and over. So this was a Golden Lion uh, V8, the 413, uh, that uh, Chrysler put in their uh, New Yorker. I think. Frank, how they, tall uh, are you? I think they put it in no, a no, Saratoga. No, no, stay next to the car. Okay. How tall are you? You're pretty tall. What yeah, you... I'm, I'm six foot three. Six foot three, and that hood is taller than you. <laughs> yes, this makes it rather easy to work on. <laughs> no problem with the hood on that one. This is like going right back to 1961 and getting the chance to see your Gold Lion 413. So I was saying that the uh, look at the all the construction. Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on on these uh, uh, air conditioners. Uh, you know, I, I get a kick out of it. You'll see cars for sale, and it'll say has uh, air conditioning just needs to be recharged. Never, never, never buy that story. If if the air conditioning, if the compressor runs and you don't get any cool air. It doesn't just have to be recharged because that refrigerant leaked out somehow and you got a leak somewhere and you're going to have to fix a leak in the system before you're going to get the air conditioning to work. That's assuming the, um, the, the compressor and dryer and, the, and the, 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 the rest of the system is intact. I found usually on these Chryslers it's the front seal on the compressor that develops a leak, Here. and that piece can be uh, replaced. There's a seal behind this, the, the clutch. And they put that all together. Well, and and so you can take, it's not too bad of a job to replace the seal. Well, let's fire it up, shall we? Okay. And we'll listen to it idle. Yeah, one thing is I can't see the exhaust on this car. 
Where is that? There it is. It's under there. Well tucked in. Frank, let's give that a rev for a second. One more with a little more authority. There we go. <laughs> that sounds great. All right, Frank, let's shut that down. Come on out. So one, one of the options that the car has is, was basically a no-option car originally, but when they were uh, rebuilding it, they used the, they call that the, the flight sweep rear deck. Uh, those of us in the hobby usually call it the toilet seat, okay. and that was a, kind of a popular option, was available on most of the, the uh, Chrysler cars. The first car to use it was the 1960 Valiant, also a Virgil Exner design, and on the 60 Valiant, that was uh, standard. Uh, the uh, uh, people will ask me when they see that, well, is the spare tire under there, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, to which I reply, no, it's just a decorative uh, thing to resemble the old Continental kits or rear-mounted spares from the, uh, the classic era. Well, Frank, first of all, thanks for being on my car story. And at the end of this video, we're going to give them a little treat, a Frank tip uh, to tell us uh, how you handle some of the uh, collector cars you have, how you keep, uh, keep the garage floor clean, so to speak. This is thanks. my Frank tip at the end of the video. Frank, what's your tip for us regarding classic cars? Well, if, if you have uh, one car or 20 cars, uh, if they're from the 50s and 60s, almost always they're going to leak something. Normally, it's uh, from the front uh, engine oil or transmission oil. Now, for years, I just used cardboard, which is messy and kind of a pain. And then I stumbled across these, uh, these mats. They're pig mats. It's the name of the company, P-I-G-G. They're extremely uh, oil absorbent. And uh, so I put these under uh, every car I have. They last a long time. You can buy them in rolls. You have a lot of cars, or you can buy them as, as uh, uh, cut into mat form. Uh, they have some that will just absorb oil and not water. So uh, these have been uh, a godsend uh, for me. The pig mat. The pig mat. P I G G. P I G G. I, I strongly recommend them. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Frank, for being on my car story. Always good to see you.